Hey guys, it's Adrian Jensen for ProductionCrate.com. As you can see, it's a bit of a rainy day today. I figured I could share some of the gloom with you by showing you how you can create your own rainy scene inside of After Effects. The base footage that I'm going to use is this one of these elephants. These are some adorable yet majestic creatures and I absolutely cannot wait to completely ruin their day. I am going to be using trap code particular for some of this, so just a heads up. On footage crate, if you select the natural elements category and navigate to the rain element section from there, you'll find all kinds of new super moist stock footage. The ones I'm interested in right now are these, the rain ripples. I've already done some work on this. I decreased the resolution and removed the background as well as stretching it out into a circle. This is so when we get to using it as a particle, we can make it 3D and make the perspective match. I'll explain more about that later. If you want to skip these steps, just go to Footage Crate and search Ripple Particle. You'll find it and you can download it for free. Bring whatever footage you're using into After Effects and make a new solid. Apply a grid effect to it and make it 3D. This is going to be our reference for perspective. Move it down to where the ground is and rotate it until it looks like it's sitting on the ground. If it looks right, then it is right. Make a new solid and apply trap code particular to it. Twirl down the emitter settings and turn the velocity, velocity random, velocity distribution, and velocity for motion to a big fat zero. You can put the particles per second up as high as you want. I want a lot of so I'm going with 2000. Change the emitter type into a box and change the Z size of that box to a zero as well and copy the position from the reference solid and paste it into the position of your emitter. Now you've got an emitter that is basically a flat plane sitting on the ground and you're now free to move it and change the size of it to make sure it covers all the watery areas of your footage. Right now it's just putting a bunch of dots in our water so let's close the emitter settings and open up the particle setting. Change the particle type to a text textured polygon and change the texture to the ripple particle we downloaded earlier. Also make sure that the time sampling is set to start at birth play once. Scale them up so we can see what we're doing, and as a matter of fact, you can turn up the size random as well. Reveal the rotation properties and change the rotation X, Y, and Z to match the orientation of your reference solid. Now maybe you can see why I had this stretched out into a flat circle. Now it looks like the ripples that are closer to us are stretched out a bit taller than the ones near the horizon, which are much more flat. This is the correct perspective. Add a solid composite to this layer and pre-compose it, moving the attributes into the new composition. Go ahead and poke its eye out as we don't actually need to see it anymore. Add a new adjustment layer over your footage and apply CC glass. Right now it's giving us some real blobby elephants, so change the surface bump map to the particular pre-comp we just made. Turn the softness, height, and displacement way down. I'm using 1, 3, and 10 respectively. We want this to be subtle. Now I know what you might be thinking. Adrian Jensen from Production Crate.com. I've seen your effects. Who in the dang heck do you think you are to talk to me about subtlety? You wouldn't know subtlety if it came up and bit you in the rear end. Now that's fair, I wouldn't. It would probably be a real small and soft bite and would go unnoticed for weeks while the venom made its way through my bloodstream until I eventually died. Doctors would be baffled because the bite is just so subtle. Like these raindrops. Subtlety is key. You can also draw a mask around this adjustment layer so it's just over the water and feather that mask out a bit. Back in the rain section on Footage Crate, we have these 4K raindrop splashes. These are like raindrops hitting the ground, but if you do a search for raindrop particle, you'll find another particle that I have prepared for you. Download it and bring it into After Effects. Go into the particular pre-comp you made earlier and copy the particular layer. Come back into the main comp and paste it. Delete the solid composite effect and change the particle type from a textured polygon to a sprite. Select the raindrop particle as the texture. These are probably going to be too small so you can increase the size of it a little bit. Right now we have our raindrops in the exact same spot as our ripples. It's actually good, it does make a lot of sense, but I want these raindrops to be hitting the ground as well, not just the water. So I'm going to scale up my emitter and move it forward. Back in the rain section on footage crate, I'm going to select three rain clips. One super fine and misty, one super close to the camera with large drops, and one sort of in between. Drop those into the comp and and set them to screen transfer modes. On the super misty rain, I'm gonna make a mask to chop off the bottom and feather it out a lot. This will help sell the distance. On the medium rain, I'm gonna do the same but a bit lower as it's closer to the camera. 
I might also go on Footage Crate and find a foggy asset and bring that in as well, and likewise chop off and feather the bottom. Now I'm going to show you a super secret trick. Grab all three rain clips and the fog and the raindrops particular layer and pre-compose them moving the attributes. Set this layer to screen. Copy and paste a copy of the footage into this pre-comp and blur it up real nice. Set it to a color transfer mode. At first this is going to look like I'm a crazy person who thinks that rain is rainbow colored. You can tone it down a bit with the opacity if this makes you uncomfortable, but if you go back into the main comp you'll see that the rain is not rainbow, it actually just matches the footage now. It's picking up the light from its surroundings is like rain would do. I do this a lot on stuff that's supposed to be sort of transparent. That's how I colored the air effects in this Dragon Ball Z versus Avatar video we did for Raka Raka. As a last touch, I'm going to add an adjustment layer and apply a hue and saturation effect to it. I'm going to select the blues and at first I'm going to turn the saturation all the way up. This is just so I can see if I'm catching all the right colors, which right now I am not. So I'm going to pull this handle over so I can grab the cyan and some of the green tones. And now that I can see that the whole sky is selected, I'm going to turn down the saturation to further sell the idea that this is not a cheery day. You can bring down the lightness too if you want. And that is how we make a rainy scene. If you want to add sound, that's easy. Go to Sounds Crate and find the ambient and background category. In this tutorial, I've been using the files Rainy Day, as well as Thunder and Crack. But there's more options for you there as well. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you're nice and subscribed. I hope that you remember to make it awesome because we all forget sometimes. And I hope that you come back and see us for the next tutorial.